Do the antennas that you seem to build just are not working? High SWR, poor performance? Well, in this video, I'm going to list the top five mistakes made when building antennas. Before I begin though, just past 150 subscribers, absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you enjoy this video and there'll be more great videos coming soon. Okay, so mistake number one, not following build dimensions properly. This applies to every antenna that you may build, whether that be a dipole for HF or a Yagi for UHF. Don't veer off from what the design is. If it says to use 12.7 millimeter tube or half inch for our US hams, use that. Remember all the designs in the ARRL antenna handbook and in other places have been built and used successfully by many hams around the world and all of them have stuck to the design. Mistake number two, check your work. Sometimes we may not even realize it, but we make mistakes. So check your work as you build, especially when building Yagis. We could accidentally add a bit of extra length on each element, or our spacing might be off. The end result being that it is much different than what we expected. Measure twice, cut once. Okay, so mistake number three, that's coax. Use the best possible feeder that you can afford. That might be RG58. It could even be RG213 or better. It doesn't matter. Just use the best quality feeder that you have. And remember at VHF and above, this is even more the case. Loss increases with frequency. So to get the best performance out of your antenna systems, use a good quality coax with low loss. The connection to the antenna is also important. Make sure that it is short as possible. A good tip to remember is that the length of coax tail contributes to the length of your antenna. So take your time and do a good job of these connections. Okay, so another tip is to use an electrical half wave length of coax at the frequency of interest for testing. This will ensure that the true impedance of the antenna is present and not affected by the coax on your test instrument. Now many of us have an MFJ or similar antenna analyzer and the manuals for these particular analyzers describe how to measure and cut such a length of coax. Let's talk about waterproofing. Now you need to waterproof as much and as good as possible. Personally, I've had success with Neutral Cure Silicon Sealant. This is available from any hardware store. It's a cheap and easy option. However, there are many other different ways that you can seal water out of your coax, perhaps by using uh, amalgamating tape. However, with a warning with this, don't use electrical tape. Most electrical tape cannot seal water out. They're only really good for wrapping over amalgamating tape for UV protection. Okay, so mistake number four, and that's mounting when testing. Remember, if possible, keep your antenna clear of any surrounding objects whilst testing. This includes roofs, houses, downpipes, poles, and anything else that is metallic around. This will skew your results. Now, a good tip when testing Yagi's is to point the antenna directly up in the air with the reflector on the ground or just off the ground if that's possible. Sometimes, if it's a large antenna, such as a HF dipole, it's handy to test in its final mounting position. However, make sure that it is still easily accessible for any last minute adjustments that need to be made. Okay, so finally, mistake number five giving up because it is not working. This is very easy to do and it is the biggest cause of frustration with antenna builders. You've spent hours, maybe even days and weeks of building this antenna and it just doesn't work. But don't give up, spend more time, analyze everything that you've done, check your measurements, test it again, test your feed line, test it again, check your connections, test it again. Another good thing to do is to get someone else to look at it. Get some of your ham buddies over. They could probably spot something that you didn't. So uh, I hope this video helps you with your antenna building going forward. Don't forget that if you enjoy this video, please leave a comment below um, on what you thought was helpful. Also, maybe uh, what you're building at the moment, what antennas you've got uh, in the pipeline. Um, I've got a HF dipole, which I'm gonna build soon. It's gonna have uh, traps so that I can operate on 80, 40, and 20 meters. Um, I'll document it on this channel, I'll put the video up, so hopefully that'll help someone too. So thanks for watching, hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you next time.